So our next finalist is a system designer and integrator of new sustainable concepts for combined heating, cooling, and electrical installations in residential buildings. Please welcome Integer Technologies. Also the microphone, please. Yes. Hello. All right, let's see the clicker. Yeah, there we go. All right, so probably it's pretty clear to everyone in this room, um, but we're sort of a tip at a tipping point in the climate crisis. And still, when it comes to the built environment, we're not really doing nearly enough. You see, the picture of sustainability that I think most people unfortunately still have is, you know, if you've got a house and you want to make it more sustainable, ah, slap some solar panels on that roof, right? Until it looks sustainable and then, you know, you call it a day. But if you look at like net zero homes uh, with their ventilation heat pumps and you see their dependence on the electricity grid, they're fully dependent on getting pretty much all their electricity sold to the electricity grid in the summer and buying it all back in the winter. But well, the electricity grid isn't a battery, which means so the previous grid I just the previous picture I just showed you with those coal fired and gas fired plants are actually what's powering all these sustainable homes. And this is a pretty big issue. Not just the issue that we need those coal-fired plants, which just last week were turned on full blast. Um, in addition, so this week even, the grid operators from the Netherlands published new maps showing just how congested the grid in the Netherlands already is. With on the left, you see the congestion uh, for consumption, and on the right, you see it for production. So there's very little capacity on the grid to produce more electricity and pump it back into the grid or buy it from the grid. Um, the future is going to have to be different. To build more sustainable buildings, we'll have to do something very, very different. It's just that, you know, some people don't quite realize it yet. So I'm Antoine Post, and together with Pau and Bart, we're Integer Technologies. And we are introducing innovative, sustainable installation concepts and database methods for a more sustainable built environment. So we design our installation concept based around four principles. Those are sustainable local energy production and use. So the simple answer is if we can't change when the sun shines, we'll change when we use the electricity that it provides instead of selling it all back to the grid. And to make that possible, we'll also need a thermal storage. And that's just a consequence of the Dutch weather, really. We have fairly warm summers and fairly cold summers, uh, fairly, <laughs> well, fairly cold winters and fairly warm summers. So we'll have to, instead of using the grid as a battery, we'll use a thermal storage as a battery, let's say. We also do shared installations per building um, because this allows us to use less raw materials and make the installations much more affordable. Uh, and finally, the control systems and monitoring allows us to guarantee the performance of the building and remotely see what's up with this installation and how it's performing and maybe even prevent um, required maintenance. We put all these concepts together into our first installation product, which is the Integer 32, and it provides heating and cooling and ventilation, um, electricity and everything you need on, let's say, your heating and energy demands um, from, a single from a single, let's say, service core. Um, and the important part is that basically all this is sort of localized um, energy use. And to make these buildings and our installations more sustainable, we didn't touch on the comfort, on, uh, sort of decrease the comfort, right? So these tiny houses that you do see popping up in some places, I think a lot of people haven't actually lived in a tiny house for very long because it can get mighty uncomfortable unless you're in the middle of a lake, then it's really nice. But if you're in the middle of a city in a really tiny apartment, it does get old. Um, and then if there's a heat wave and it gets really hot, it's terribly uncomfortable. Now last week it was 34 degrees uh, in Helmond and the indoor temperature um, for us was a cool 22 degrees, I think. Um, and the most important part is that wasn't a huge energy demand. All that heat that was added to our building during that heat mini heat wave, we extracted it, stored it in the ground so we can use it again in the winter. So making it more comfortable and more sustainable at the same time. Um, we're also much more independent from volatile energy prices for our residents. So imagine for social housing, energy prices are a big deal. So taking away that volatility and giving them security is very important. And in addition to that, because we're much less independent from the electricity grid, we also have 
much lower emissions compared to even normal systems with uh, heat pumps. So as I said, it's a prefabricated module, um, well, several prefabricated modules that you stack on top of each other and are able to build really quickly on site. But maybe even more important is the monitoring system that comes with it. So by essentially this, these concepts get quite complicated to become more sustainable, you need more complicated uh, installations, but they also give us a really nice opportunity. They give us a lot of data and a lot of information about how that system is performing. And with the advanced monitoring capabilities we have and the algorithms we can run to um, see what's going on with the system, we can even prevent, maintain, uh, prevent faults from occurring altogether. So gone are the days that an installer has to come on site to figure out, oh boy, what's wrong with this thing? And try replacing all sorts of components and things until it starts working again. Now you can log in remotely, figure out what exactly is wrong. Maybe we can bypass the faulty component for now and get an installer on site with exactly the tools he needs to go fix the problem. And then when he's on site, he can go there, plug in his computer and see exactly what he needs to do to fix the issue as soon as possible. Now, we haven't just dreamt this, we've also built our first prototype, which is the Casa 1.0, um, which we built in Helmond. Um, it's a demo installation, which has uh, three apartments, um, of which two are currently inhabited, and one is a showroom, um, and where we basically implemented all the ideas I just told you, but in a slightly smaller compact version. Um, this Casa One was purchased by uh, Social Housing Corporation Vomitrijf as a proof of concept, this is the future of social housing. The roadmap for the next few years, um, we're going to develop together with building company Herx, the Casa 2.0, the next larger version of this same installation. And in the next few years, we want to be, whoops. Ah, in the next few years, we want to be um, commissioning between 20 to 100 systems per year based on these installations. And that brings me to my last slide. Thank you very much for your attention, and if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Uh, oh yeah, right, to answer the questions. I can ask the question again of around 5G. So how are you yes. going to use the 5G hub uh, for this uh, solution? Um, so right now, we use Wi-Fi. <laughs> Um, so we have a Wi-Fi connection in, in the demo project, and that is an issue because you can't always get Wi-Fi in your technical room. Um, and that's simply because get, even if there's a fiber connection outside, getting it to have a separate Wi-Fi connection inside the service room is a problem. And so having a wireless solution is sort of the way to go, right? Because you don't want your building to only work after someone has come on site and installed the internet for you. That'd be really inconvenient. Um, so, honestly, very honestly, I think most of the things that we need to do, you could probably do it with 4G. <laughs> um, but I think more going towards the future, if you see well, the example I was saying with the installer coming on site and having to fix something. So these installations, truth be told, they're a lot more complicated than the general gas you know, uh, thing you find in normal houses. And so if something were to happen and it's complicated to fix, maybe you'd want to be able to have a direct connection to uh, maybe a camera there to explain to someone what's going on, or some you know art, uh, AR glasses that they can put on, and then you start needing that 5G part. I think it. Um, <laughs> so the. I think yeah, the real technical advantage of the system. Yeah, there you go. Um, so it's, it's about the integration of the components, right? So th there is a heat pump in here that, you know, people have heard of heat pumps before, but it's the way you use them, right? And the real importance is doing all the energy that you need locally. And to be able to do that, you need to be able to tell your system what to do in quite a complicated way. So really quite complicated control systems and algorithms that determine for hundreds of different possible uh, weather conditions and you know uh, indoor conditions what is the most optimal thing the system could be doing right now because again right th these installations there's quite a lot of it so they're quite expensive so 
it's only worth it if you use them in the most optimal, optimal way. Getting a heat pump and then having it run in two different modes, either cooling or heating, that's not gonna work because that's a waste of money, right? Because this heat pump can do so much more. And the same with all the other parts of the system. So in the end, it's the fine tuning of that control is where the actual difference comes in. What are the change over costs? So currently we have, uh, I might, this concept, I like it for new buildings. You also have a, a lot of existing buildings that are empty. You want to have people, residents in there. What's the change over cost in the business case? Um, so if you compare this to, so the, the part of our system that is, let's say, the, the VKO part of a, well, I call it traditional uh, system, um, it would be about 25,000 euros per apartment, depending a bit on how many apartments you connect up, right? So you can optimize that a little bit further. Thanks.